that we can't conform. There's no time to conform. There's no time to change. There's no time to turn around. And let me transform my mind. Transform it back to where I believe in you, Lord, and trust in you with all my heart. Now, thank you for your words this thank morning. You, and I ask you to bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give a lovely man praise. Sacrifice 
holy and acceptable unto God. You see, it took a long time for me to realize man might not accept it. But as long as my praise is accepted of him on high, it don't matter what man thinks. It took a long time for me to realize you gotta walk this walk and don't just talk this talk. Because when nobody else around, you gonna need that holy God that you serve in. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He said, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Comma. And the next thing he said, holy. You got to understand in the transforming and the renewing of my mind. Conforming to tell you anything I get in heaven. <laughs> conforming out that line, letting people know that it's a new day and, and it's a new way. Oh, but Jesus said, I'm the way. The truth and the life. No man come to the Father except by me. You see, he had holy in that sinners for a reason. For the Bible says, be ye holy. For I am holy, said the Lord. Oh, preaching this. And I understand. It's not that I'm trying to put me up here. or trying to make serving God hard. Because it's not. He said, present your body a living sacrifice holy, acceptable unto God. Man might say it's okay, but is it acceptable unto God? Come on, help us, Lord. We're in a day, church. If we want to be real with one another, everything goes outside. In the world now, we, have a, we are living in a place to where a lot of things that God frowned upon Man is saying it's okay. Come on, church. You see, oh, I, I don't have a problem preaching you a I feel good message. I don't have a problem preaching you a prosperity message. I don't have a problem preaching you a God is love message. But you know why God is love? He said, hey, what more love than this? Than a man lay down his life for a friend. He done already showed us how much he loves us. He done already told us how much he loves us. But now he's asking me today, do you love him? Are you willing to conform, to transform your mind and not conform to the thing that you hear it outside? Yeah. Oh Amen. Come on. If you pay attention to what's going on in the world, if you listen to the news, if you read the news, if you just, just pay attention to it, everything is being pulled from different sides. This side is better than that side. This group is better than that group. Oh, and I, where the preacher's at? Where the evangelist at now? Where the man standing on the mountain now? Where the preacher's at saying, hold up. You're talking about this man and this man and, and that woman and that woman. Well, now it's time for somebody to knock on the door and say, well, why don't you say it? Jesus is the way. Yeah. Where you at? Tell the man to this. Where you at? Preach us. Why don't you get on the mountaintop and holler now and let them know that God is still in control? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, I get it. I hear it sometimes. Man, all you do is preach Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Well, who you want me to preach? Peter? Come on. Peter Wiggins? Huh. I'm not here for me. I'm here for the Lord. Yeah. And I'm going to trumpet, I'm going to blow it, and I'm going to let them know that Jesus is coming back. You can get caught up. You see, conformity by taking mine off the prize. Yeah. He said, in my father's house are many mansions. I'm going to prepare a place for you. But if I'm not careful, I'll give up my mansion for a short two. Uh -huh. If I'm not careful, I'll give up my robe and a crown for sin and falling down. Yeah. Come on. Spiritual mind transformation. Amen. And look what he told him in verse 1. He said, which is your reasonable service? The Lord says it's not hard. It's not hard loving me. Yeah. It's not hard living for Jesus. In this day and time, well, you don't understand how hard it is. Well, I could go in the Bible and show you where they had pestilence, 
where they had disasters, where they had storms, where they had mass death. Come on now. And God's people still came out on top. What's it saying, preacher? It's no time to conform and give up and throw in the towel and say, I quit. And say, I can't make it. It's time for you to turn up your moments and look toward the hill where your help coming from. Because Jesus Amen. is going to win this thing. When we're on the mountain, we, we can quote this scripture, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. <laughs> See, when you're feeling good, you can quote them things. But what about when the weapon is forming up against you and you can't see it, but you can feel the pressure? Oh, Ooh, hallelujah, Jesus. And look at Paul's over in verse 2. He said, be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Conformity. I say, ooh, bad news, bad news, bad news, bad news. But the gospel said, good news, good news, good news, good news. Yes, yes. So I have to make up my mind whether I'm going to be consumed by the bad news, by the doom and gloom and the doubt. Or will I be consumed and transformed to the good news? And say, even though one might fall by this side, a thousand might fall on this side, I'm going to trust in the Lord and he will see us through. Amen. Trust in And all things. Conformity, I say, if you can't beat them, <laughs> John, well, I said the same thing. On the spiritual side, you can't beat Jesus. So join him. The Bible said we fight against our own self sometimes by resisting the truth and turning away from God and trying our own thing. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. That you may prove what is good and acceptable to God and perfect will of God. Got a story that the Lord had did a parable. We'll find it in the book of Luke. Go there for a minute. Very, very familiar book. <laughs> when I was thinking about the conforming of the mind and transformation, the Lord brought me to this story and I, I related to it and I hope you can relate to it again this morning. Luke chapter 15. Okay. Amen. Y'all know the story? Very familiar story of the prodigal son. He wanted to conform instead of transform. Amen. Luke chapter 15, verse 11. Jesus gave a parable and he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that fall into me. And he divided unto him, unto them his living. Not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. He heard the music of the world and said, that sounds good. He heard the fellow saying how the grass was greener on the other side. He heard the, 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 the message preached that God is good and God is love and all that other stuff ain't necessary. Do what you want to do and God understand. That's not scripture. Come on. For the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Right. The Bible also declared that there's a way that seemed right unto man right. and in the end it's death. Mm -hmm. But the prodigal son he didn't just wake up one morning and thought of this. He had to have been looking at something. Come on now. He had to have been driven by something. The Bible says we are driven according to our own lusts. You see, if you desire the things of the world, if you desire the things of the flesh, if you desire the things that are opposite of God, guess what? You won't get it. 
There's an enemy called seat. The adversary. Walking to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. Yes. Yes. And he's going to give me, preacher, you, saint, visitor, whoever, online, offline, <laughs> whatever we desire to conform to the things that's going to take us from God. That's true. Yes. That's, yes. Him. that's him. That's him. We don't know the spiritual condition of the family that the boy wanted to leave, but Jesus wouldn't have used them hmm. if there was a sinner family and one that wasn't living for God. Right. I don't think he, he was going to use somebody no good to do a good parable. Hmm. And the young man said, give me mine so I can leave. Well, why are you leaving? Well, I'm, I'm tired of this and I'm tired of that and I want to I wanna live my life the way I want to live my life. All of the conformity and all of the things that men and women see to get out of a situation. Kind of like love. <laughs> love is good, but love can be hard. Mm. Yes. Love can be bad. Mm. Love can blind you yeah. and cause you to conform to things that you're normally not supposed to conform to. Come on now. Uh, let me preach just a few minutes. How many times you might have heard or might have saw or might have read or, or even experienced that people might say, what's wrong with your mind? <laughs> Guys, you know how they tell us when we do things that all our wives want to do or our girlfriend, our partners will tell us, man, that woman will blew your mind. <laughs> or man, that woman got your mind. Old folks, you say, boy, your nose open. Girl, your nose open. How many times we as people done saw some activities and we scratch our head and say, man, what is wrong with their mind? Mm. They don't necessarily have to be that kind of relationship. Mm. What you saying, preacher? That's a transformation that needs to take place. Yeah. That's a spiritual healing that needs to take place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. yes, Lord. See, preaching like this sometimes confuse their mind. Why? Because it's simplicity of the gospel. This is not rocket science. Come on. We want me to show you how Jesus healed mine? Stay with me, Proverbs come for a minute. We're going to go. There was a man in, in Galilee. Jesus went, and the Bible says this man was in the graveyard among the tombs. Come on now, y'all will help me this morning. And the Bible says that no man could tie him up. They tried to put chains on him. They tried to bind him, and it didn't work. Mm. How many ever done prayed for family members, and it don't work? How many times they done locked them up, and it didn't work? How many times they done shot them up with medicine, and it didn't work? But I tell you what, when the pain pill don't work, the power of prayer will. Yeah. When, that, when that hit, when that, 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 that needle don't work, a dose of the Holy Ghost will work. You got to get them to a place. Let me show you what happened. The Bible said the man would just cut himself and he would holler day in and day out. He was so much into that nutrition in that graveyard, they stopped having funerals. <laughs> the Bible said he would vex the people so much, they made a trail around where he was. You see, he was out of his mind. But the Bible said one day, one day, Lord. one day, come on now. Jesus came through town, and the, even the demons that was possessing this man said, oh, we're about to be transformed. Come on now. And the demons ran up to him with the man, and the man said, have you come to torment us before time? My Lord. The spiritual realm mm -hmm. is no power mm -hmm. for God that we serve. Yes. Greater is he that is in me, that he that is in the world, greater is he that is in you, that he that is in the world. And you got to understand, you have power to cast out devils. You have power to pray and help your family and friends get delivered from the mind. But guess what? You have to first be transformed. Why? 
Because if I conform, I'll be like the other folks and say, it won't work. Yeah. They don't need a praying for them. They too far gone. Yeah. Well, I was too far gone, according to man. You may have been too far gone, according to statistics. But then one day, there was a transformation took place. I found an altar in an apostolic church. And I said, Lord, forgive me of all my sins. Yeah. First of all, if you can help me get some peace of mind. Yes. Yes. Ooh, hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus. And we know the story. Jesus cast the demons out. They went into halls and swines and they jumped over. But the Bible said at the end of the day, he was clothed. And in his right mind, sitting at the feet of Jesus. How many of you know when you get your mind right, you're going to put some clothes on? How many of you know when you get your mind right, you're going to put that in spirit? How many of you know when you get your mind right, you're going to quit hollering like an animal and living like a dog? And you're going to come to church, you're going to put your family right, you're going to do right, you're going to live right. I'm going to let you know, you need a mind transformation. And the only one that can save this moment is Jesus Christ. Give up to people. Tell them, oh man, they the laws in mind. Nobody want to be bothered with them. And, and see, they used to get upset with Jesus because he would go and talk to the sinners. He would go and talk to the lepers. He would go and talk to the hardy. And you see, when you're picking and choosing in the kingdom, you got a problem. Right. You see, the church, the hospital don't say we take all patients except. Come on now. Right. But the church wants to say, we want them all. But them, them who? You got to remember where you came from, them. Come on. Because right. Paul said, so was some of we. Yeah. Oh, we might roll our eyes at some folks now. Because we see them falling in a stupor because they didn't have too many to drink. You see, don't get too high-minded. Amen. Because the Bible tells us also in that same verse that I read earlier, he said, a man shouldn't think himself to be more than he ought. Yeah. We gotta remember where we came from. Come on, come on. You ever been in a situation where the pressure was on us and all we could do is say, Lord, I need help in my mind? Yes, yes, yes. You see, the, the truth will make us free. Yes. Amen. Woo, and getting back to the proud son of the story. The Bible says he left. Huh. Verse 14, and then Bible says 13, he said, he went into a far country. And they are wasted. His substance with riotous living. You see, somebody told him the honky tonks was good for him. He said, man, all y'all do is go to church. All you do is go home, go to work. All you do is cook and, and wash. Y'all don't have no fun. What's fun about dying mm. and going to hell? Come on. What's fun about going back to the slop to where the Lord took us from? He said, I pulled you out of darkness and put you into his marvelous light. Yes, Lord. He said, it's not fun going back to the thing that you used to be ashamed of. Come on, come on. Come on church. Come on. But you see, conformity will tell you, well, you know, if because of COVID, I got to find something to do. Go pray. <laughs> Sing some songs in the house with your family. Yeah. Read the word. Yes. Put on some gospel music and have your Holy Ghost power. In the house. You see, conformity to the tell you, sin is the way. But I tell you, I got news for you. You better renew your mind. Because yeah. the devil will use any excuse to trip you up and to bring you down with him. Let me help you. Let's get this in. Watch this. Here we go. Thank you, Jesus. What happened? Verse 14. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land. And he began to be in want. <laughs> you see, when you conform and you're, and, and, and you're caught up in self and caught up in flesh and your mind is bad, all rationalization is gone. Yeah. See, he had a whole bunch of money. And all he was thinking about was party, 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 party. He didn't think about buying no grocery. <laughs> he didn't think about saving some for a rainy day. He didn't leave room saying, well, I used to get a stipend every month because I'm working with my daddy on the phone, but now I won't get nothing. See, he didn't put all that in perspective because his mind was gone. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and all he saw was conforming. All he saw was looking to see how many people was patting him on his back. We got a new, we got a new, uh, we got a new front in town. I mean, we got a new man in town. <laughs> oh, well, who is that? I don't know. But man, he's spinning up some change. He buying everybody around. Come to happy hour. And when happy hour was over, he was broke. And then he messed up and look at that verse 15. He became a woman. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him to the fields to feed the swine. And he began to feign and have filled his belly with the husk of the swine and did eat. And no man gave him. Now hold up. But let me show you something. When you're all the way at the bottom, and looking up to the top, a transformation gonna come. Come on. David said, I lay on my bed and I commune with my own heart. I believe you remember how good it was when he would play those songs and the Spirit of the Lord would come upon him. You see, everybody in here, everybody online, you got a good side of victory that you can think back on. When God was your God and you was his child. And I'm not saying we not now, but I'm saying you got to have something that you can go back on and say, you know what? I got to get back where I was. Yes, come on. I got to get my mind right. Mm -hmm. Everybody said I could do better with me sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? Conformity will tell you, you got it going on. And pride will tell you, you got it going on. And lies will tell you, you got it going on. Mm -hmm. But if you could see the whole pen mm -hmm. that I'm in, mm -hmm. if you could see how I'm smiling on the outside, but on the inside, I'm crying because my mind is messed up. Right. And he had his reality checked, and here he go. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Verse 17. And when he came to himself, when folks on drugs or folks in the state of alcohol, their mind is not right. And what they do, they tell them, oh, give them time to sleep and let it wear off. And then they'll come back into their right mind. Hmm. Drink them some coffee and they'll be all right. But in the spirit, you can sleep all you want. It ain't gonna change your mind until I would say men won't change. Until they won't change. Right. You it. see, it was in the hall pen where that transformation took place. And the young man realized, you know what? I can do better than this. Mm. You know what? I left church. I left God. I prayed for a job. And he gave me one. I prayed for a family, and he gave me one. I prayed for this, and he gave me one. Now I left him. And I'm in the hall pen. Yeah. But you know what I love about the Lord? His mercy is renewed every morning. And this young man, the Bible said, when he came to himself, and when he came to himself, look what he said. How many hired servants of my father have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. Right. And for the sake of preaching, how much peace of mind I had when I was in church. How much joy I had when I was singing and playing for the Lord instead of singing and playing in the club. How much peace of mind I had knowing that when I walk in the street, I don't have to watch my back because my life is straight up and it's not like it used to be where I have to run from gangsters that chasing me and gangsters got to run from gangsters that I'm chasing. Right, right. How many times it gets to the point to where you look like you're running from your own shadow? <laughs> Something you can't outrun. Only time you have peace is at night. Mm. Until you walk under a light and your shadow gonna be bigger than it was in the daytime. Mm. Now that preach. You can't run from your shadow. 
You can't run from yourself. The Bible said, oh, wretched man. Oh, Then the one more before I close it up after a while. Show you spiritual mind transformation. Go over to 2 Corinthians. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, look at verse 1. Paul was right again. He said, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. See, they got a bunch of games out there. I preach to you. It's all right. Just bring your tithes. Bring your offering. Just buy me a suit on Pastor Appreciation Day. Just buy me some, buy me a limo. Maybe buy me a jet. Can you see me with a jet and don't have no money to put fuel in it? <laughs> well, y'all put the fuel too. Let me just preach to you. You got it. You're going to do it. You're going to make it. Just do what you want to do. It's your thing. You remember that? See, all that two young people in the song. It's your thing. Do what you want to do. Come on now. And that's how something go down. I'm a man. I'm a woman. I'm grown. Another time before another day. Verse 2. He said, But by a manifestation of the truth, committing ourselves to every man conscious in the sight of God. This, the scripture that made me transform my mind and helped me understand that I need to be saved. Verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Not your opinion, not your home teaching, not your tradition, but Paul said it's gospel. Right. You, you can read all the books, you can Google all the information you want, but Paul said if this gospel, the repentance of your sins, getting baptized in Jesus' name, be filled with the Holy Ghost, turning your life around and living holy from that time on, if this gospel is here, is here for those that are lost. Why Paul could say that with some firmness? Because at one time, Paul was on his way to Damascus. Paul had it gone on according to man. He was a Hebrew of Hebrews. He was persecuting the church, and he had a letter to destroy those that were believing in Jesus Christ. Oh, but one day, he had his transformation. The Bible said the S U N, the S O N sign shine brighter than the S U N. Knocked him to his knees. Yeah. And that transformation had to come by the renewing of his mind. How he got renewed. He said, Who art thou? He said, and Jesus said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. Mm -hmm. He said, But Paul, you got some mercy today, paraphrasing. He said, But I'm going to show you what persecution is. I'm going to show you what it's going to mean to get persecuted for my sake. But I'm going to be with you. Yeah. And he wrote it. But look what he says in the next verse. In whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not. I don't believe what you're saying, preacher. You're blind. All that ain't necessary, you're blind. It's more than one way to go to heaven. You're blind. Yes, yes. I can do what I want to do. God understand. You're blind. Yes. You ain't the only one saved. You're right. All right, guys. They have millions believe like we believe. Yeah. But he said, if you don't believe and you, you can't find it or you don't believe it, the Bible says you're lost. Yeah. And I don't know if Amazing Grace was made because of the prodigal son. But the Bible said, that song said, I was blind, but now I see. Thank you, Lord. You, heard the, you know what his dad said to his son? He said, this was my son that was blind. Because the brother was mad that he came back home. 
See, he didn't, he didn't understand the transformation of the mind. Mm -hmm. And he said, this is my son that was lost. Mm -hmm. But now he's found. Mm -hmm. Paul just said, the God, look, you know what I like in this one? He said, in whom the God, with a little G, <laughs> let you know that our God, with the big G, no, right. is bigger than that little God, See with a little G. See so I don't know why you worry if you're serving the God with the big G. Because we always take out the God with the little G. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's a whole new Sunday school lesson. What you learn today? We got a God with a big G. And look what he said. The God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of this glorious gospel of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine unto them. He said, you know why the devil trying to blind them? So they don't see. Right. So they don't get their mind right. Mm -hmm. That's why Paul wrote, don't conform to that foolishness that you're hearing. Mm -hmm. That you don't have to go to church. Mm -hmm. Well, I, well I look, I, I'm not worried. COVID is a whole different thing. Don't get the message out of context. Okay? Some of you was missing church before COVID. Mm -hmm. Okay? So don't let COVID be no excuse for you not coming. Right. Amen? Right. Come on now. Yeah. That's don't, real. But the bottom line is, he said now, don't let those excuses. COVID don't have nothing to do with how long you pray at your house. Yeah. COVID don't have nothing to do that. Open your same Bible that I'm reading from and saying, come on, church. Come on, family. Let's read some scripture. Remove your mind. Amen. It's amazing how people want God's help, but don't want to talk to God. Yeah. People want God's blessings, but want somebody else to pray for those blessings. Yeah. I don't have a problem praying for you, but there's some things you can't borrow. You gotta have your own relationship. Come on. Yes, yes. I got my own mind. Huh. And then sometimes you might have minds with S. Because your mind is one thing one day, and your mind is another, and the Bible says an unstable mind is unstable in all things. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. <laughs> in whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not. If you, never, if you don't believe, you never will receive it. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I'm going to close, we're going to close with what we opened up with, going back to Romans 12 and 1. And I'll close it at that. Romans 12 and 1, he said, I beseech you, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Paul wrote a letter begging the people. I don't have a problem, please, for the sake of our soul. Jesus. You know why I always include me in that situation? Because I preach to me first. All right. I don't come in talking about you better, you this, you that. I say, oh, sweet. That's how Paul said, so was some of we. But I'm about to see nothing good. But if his mercy is renewed every morning, why shouldn't I renew my mind every morning? Like this one. Lord, I'm not going to be carried away with every winner doctrine. I can't preach feel-good messages just to make you feel good. Right. Peter, you love me? Yes, Lord. Feed my sheep. Peter, you love me? Lord, you know I love you. Feed my sheep. And the third time Peter got kind of frustrated, he said, Lord, why do you keep asking me this? He said, because when you are converted, strengthen your brother. And when you see them get off course, Peter, y'all got to bring them back in line. When you see, Paul wrote, he said, Demas have forsaken me, loving this present world. Yes. Demas walk with the Lord, with Paul, preach with Paul, converted churches with Paul. But somewhere down the line, the world called Demas back and he conformed to that calling and left Paul and his glorious gospel mm -hmm. and everything that it have to offer. The only thing that's going to get right in our life 
and help us fight the things that we can't see. We're going to need the touch from that Almighty. We're going to need the angels. We're going to need His mercy that we can't see coming out of our life, coming out of our home. We're going to need that hedge. Yeah. We're going to need that protection yes. over all the things in this world that we can't fight. Come on. And we got to have him. But to the flesh, that don't sound right. To the natural mind, that don't sound right. But when you read this Bible, everything that man thought was impossible, <laughs> it happened. I ask you today, is there anything too hard for the Lord? I say no. no. So what you do is you get strong this morning. And you ask the Lord, Lord, all my doubt, take it out. Yes, yes, yes. All my ifs and coulds and shoulds, Lord, let it be yes, it will, and I can. And let me not conform to the negativity. Let me not conform to give it up. And quit like so many others that I see around me. Mm. Not to be a judge, but to be an example. For the Bible says, those who endure until the end, yes. the same shall be saved. Yes. And I want you to know you will make it to the end if you hold on and trust in the Jesus. I love you. In Jesus' name. Amen.